Hello, hello, hello. Brothers and sisters, peace be upon you all. Pray you're all doing well. Thank God for this new dart, this new start, this new day of freedom. It's day one coming out of the darkness, extreme darkness. This has definitely been the most addicted I've been in my entire life. It's been the worst. It's been the worst period of addiction. It's been absolute filth. Uh, becoming, it was degenerate. There's no other way to put it. It was degenerate activity. It was degenerate action. It was, I can't even recognize the person I was becoming, you know? Like the me, the man who, who first started making these videos, who started this channel, he would be horrified, he would be shocked, he would be disgusted to see the person I've been recently. He, he, he just, he'd be losing his mind, like what on earth happened to me? How did I end up here? I thought I was gonna be free and clean, living free and clean, channel name. Thought it was, it was over. No more of this garbage, filthy, destructive, abhorrent addiction. No more of this. I thought it was done, man. God, what on earth happened to me? Like, please bring me out of this. This is no way to live. No way to live a life. Not a life, man. Yeah, in the, the last streak I had when I was uploading videos on this channel and stuff, made it about over 50 days, I suppose. I had surgery on <laughs> the very area. It was, I mean, it was surgery literally on my penis. And I still managed to relapse. It's like that, that level of addiction is insane. Like, that's literally that's some form of self-harm. That's like a cry for help at that point. It's like, you've had surgery on that area. There was literally a blade. You know, I was sore. You know, it, it, it bled. Sometimes when I would go to the toilet, and we still managed to relapse from that. After that, with all that going on. Insanity. Absolute insanity, man. No way to live a life. No way to live a life. We gotta get better. I have to find a way out of this. You know? It has to be a way out. Because this is not sustainable. Now, my life is just deteriorating. I'm becoming so unmanageable. Alright? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be 29 soon. 29, almost 30. How many years has it been in addiction? How many years has it been of trying to quit this filth, this garbage, right? And just accumulating all of this self-destruction. I mean, for one thing, it's, it's really difficult for me to find a job right now because there are so many employment gaps in my CV, in my resume. So many employment gaps there. People are wondering, like, what have you been doing all this time? Right? You you didn't go to university. You didn't go to college. No degree, no qualifications or anything besides high school, secondary school. Like, what, what have you done? Live your life. You've had so many jobs, like 12, 13 different jobs. Some of them barely lasted a couple months there right some periods you didn't work for like a year so what have you done with your life you're 29 you left school at 18 that's, that's 11 years ago where did all that time go and i think part of the reason why they ask people about these employment checks and stuff is to find out what have you been does like were you involved in gang activity were you in prison were you a drug addict well yes Yes, they don't know that, but yes. This is not the kind of drug that they're thinking about. You know what I mean? 
It's a different kind of drug. Looks like that's just one area where things have just been wrecked. It's like the opportunity, I mean, if I wanted to build a career, it'd be extremely difficult. Very difficult to get a job in this state. Very. Because people are just wondering, what have you done with your time? What have you done with your life? It's just been a mess all over the place. My finances, I owe about four thousand, I think it's over. It's over four thousand pounds, British pounds. She's like, I don't know. Five and a half thousand dollars or something. I don't know. It's over that. It's bad. I owe a lot of money. And I don't have a job right now, which means I'm going to need to borrow more in order to sustain myself. All right? And it was all thinking of all the relationships that have soured because I was isolating, not responding to people's calls or WhatsApp messages or. All of that sort of thing. Because we were there binging. We don't want to be disturbed. We don't want people coming and interrupting. We don't have to deal with the social anxiety. And the shame and guilt is written on our face. And all that stuff. After the relapse. All of that. Don't want to deal with it. So we don't. I wasn't talking to people. I wasn't talking to people. And I've had friends that just said, you know what? I had to have a good life. Have a good life, mate. Because they're tired of chasing me, of asking me how I'm doing, of saying, is there anything I can do to help? And I help bring you out of this. What can I say to you? What can I do for you? That's, everyone has a limit, and they just got tired. And it's not their fault at all. I don't blame them one bit. I'm even grateful they, they hang out. They hang on, they hang, they hung on that long that they stuck around that long. You know what I mean? Sorry, brain fog. Yeah. Grateful they stuck around that long. And the ones that are still here, they're just, they're just honestly disgusted with me. They're like, I, I can't, I'm not happy to sit by and, and watch you destroy your life watch yourself harm so don't don't talk to me about this stuff anymore if you aren't willing to change it's painful but it's honest and truthfully I wouldn't do. no good friend would would stand around and watch someone self-harm it's horrible what I've been doing to myself horrible <sighs> my spiritual life things I want to do spiritual getting closer to God everything building that connection with the divine it's well, you can't have a connection in this state because it's it's rebellion it's it's adultery it's like spiritual murder it's idolatry it's all the things you're not supposed to be doing it's just it's so wrong on many levels it's like the person that I am, while in PMO, it's not just me that I'm harming. It's my family, because I'm not giving them the best version of me as my friends. Because we're like, if life events or anything happen, and I'm not there for them. I'm not there, I'm, I'm isolating, I'm binging, I'm not present for anybody. I'm no use to anybody. I'm not bringing in money for the family. You know, I'm, I'm a sponge, I'm a leech. I'm not earning anything. Just burden, uh, a financial burden, I'm eating all this food. You know, bills are being paid for me and all this stuff. And what am I doing? I am an emotional burden because people are worrying. They're worrying about me. Like, well, what can we do to help this guy? How do we help him get his life on track? How do we help him move forward? Do we need to pay for therapy for him or something? I'm just just attacks I, I'm not physically able to be there for other people so I'm, I'm not there for myself I'm not looking after myself in that way 
Just give me a minute. I want to cross the road. Yeah, I'm back. So as I was saying, you know, just being a tax, being a burden on everyone else. Spiritual life. I mean, I want to be studying like Quran. I want to be learning Arabic. All this stuff. It's, it's not. It's not happening. It's not happening. So what am I doing with my time instead? Not good things. Definitely not good things. Procrastination at an all-time high. And I really I can't afford. I literally cannot afford procrastination. I'm in debt. I can't afford it. I need to be working. Or applying for jobs or something. Um, weight is just... I've gained a lot of weight. Stuff. Thankfully, thank God, I've lost some. I was obese last year, so I've lost some weight, but this is, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to be saying things like, well, at least I'm not obese. Like, it's not really, it's not great. Yeah. Time to end this. It's time to really come out of this because longer. We stay in the addiction. It just it, it gets harder. The addiction becomes stronger. I say I've never been this addicted before. Yeah, I've never you before. It would not take me this long to get back on track and start trying to all right new start and everything. It didn't take months for me to decide. Okay, now is the time to get my life in order. Really shouldn't. My self-confidence is so low. It's so low. I, do, I don't know. I honestly don't know if I'll make it two weeks. I don't know. I really don't know. Like, I, I, wanna, I want to say all the usual, you know, there's the last time, new start, new me, new beginning, and everything. I just, I feel so broken. I feel so... We have to try. We have to try. We always have to try. The worst day sober is better than the best day as an addict. This is no way to live. There's no way to live a life. And my future, there is no future as an addict. There's none. I can't get married with this going on. I can't, I can't bring this into a family. Right. I, mean, I can barely sustain and support myself in this position. I can't. It's not happening. I'm not sustaining myself. I can't. So there's, there's no way I could do it with a family that I'm trying to build. I mean, who would even want to marry me in this state? I wouldn't if I were a woman. So it has to end. Got to make a new start, man. So yeah, brothers and sisters, we got to find some hope. We got to hold on to hope. This is not the life that God wants us to be leading, right? This world is so, honestly, it's, it's degenerate right now. There's so much disgusting things going on on this planet. And I've been contributing. You know, I've been adding to the views on these videos. I've been downloading them and adding to the downloads. Is boosting it up in the rankings. Other people are seeing it because I, I just I've been a part of the whole system. No more. No more. It's time to make changes. We gotta remember, brothers and sisters, we can all do this. Peace.